Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I had a couple of young kids ask me, um, young techs ask me, you know, the 30 plus rule uh, about it, and uh, they didn't learn it in school, and um, they wanted to know, you know, if I knew what it was. And yeah, I know what the 30 plus rule. Um, it's for head pressure on a condensing unit. Basically, a 10 sear uh, condensing unit. You take the outside temperature, and you add 30 to it, and you look on your PT chart, and that'll give you, uh, you know, more or less what your head pressure should be. Now, I'm going to do a little video on this and uh, discuss it, but that's how it works. Now, a 13 sear is like 25 plus outside ambient temperature will give you what your head pressure should be, more or less. Now, there's a lot of things that come into effect, you know, what the pressure should be. And what it is when you get there is always, you know, two separate things. You know, airflow is going to determine, you know, have an effect on head pressure. If the system it has no airflow and you got to put in less refrigerant to, to bring your superheat down because it's flooding back, that's going to affect that. If your system's not installed properly or has insufficient uh, returns, um, it's going to, the whole system's going to be affected. So on a, on a perfect system in a factory where everything's working properly on a 10 sear air conditioning, the head pressure will be outside temperature plus 30, say if it's 70 plus 30 and you look on a PT chart and they'll tell you, you know, where, where you need to be more or less. But like I said, it's always more or less it's never carved in stone nothing's carved in stone when you get out working it working with the tools you know what it should be and what it is sometimes is two separate things and you have to kind of like all right this is what it should be but you know it's flooding back the compressor so you have to take some refrigerant out to stop the, the compressor from flooding back so then your head pressure won't be right if your piston's the wrong size or if your thermal expansion valve's not working right your head pressure's not going to be right so you know just bear with me, and this is just, you know, basic stuff to go by, but it's not carved in stone. Nothing's carved in stone. You have to know what's going on in the system and what it should be, and then when you come across problems, you can say, all right, this isn't what it should be. Why? And then you look into things de deeper and to find out, you know, to fix the problem. That's all part of becoming a technician. So hopefully this uh, video, uh, you know, shines a little light on a couple of couple of people, and um, I hopefully it helps a couple of guys. All right, thanks for watching. All right, this is the the thirty rule for ten sear units. Outside temperature plus thirty would give you 100 for 10 sear. And you have to come over to your um, PT chart. So the second one in is 22. Okay. And then over here is PSI. But let's just go by this. So if your outside temperature is 70 and you got a 10 sear unit, you add 30 to 70, so you got 100. So if you go down the 22 scale, the 22 a column, which is the second one in. If you go to a hundred, okay, then you go over to PSI. Uh, it's one ninety-five. So the head pressure on a seventy-degree day on a ten C unit should be more or less one ninety-five. Now. Um, you know, if you got a problem with airflow and you know you got low, you know half the returns, your head pressure is not going to be that. This is if the system is installed properly and everything is working the way it should, and your piston or your thermal expansion valve is is working properly, then you know, you know that's something that you got to shoot for. But that's never always carved in stone. So you have to, you know, what what should it be and what it is is always, you know, uh, two separate things. There's other things that go on out in the real world that you can't always, um, 
you know, if the system's screwed up, it's screwed up. But that's 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 the thirty the thirty rule right there. Now on a thirteen sear, you drop down to twenty five. The higher the sear, the lower the number. So seventy plus twenty five is ninety five. Twenty two scale, you go to ninety five. We'll say we'll say ninety four because that's pretty close, you know, ninety four. So. One eighty. So on a seventy degree day, you know, a thirteen C is going to have a lot more capability in 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 the condensing unit. So it's going to be a lower head pressure. I had a couple of guys ask me to do this, so I figured I would do it. You know, like I said again, you know, that's what you shoot for, but that's not always carved in stone. All right, let's do the 410A. All right, say the 410A, 13 sear, 70 degrees outside, plus 25 would be 95. What should the head pressure be on a 410A system at 70 degrees ambient temperature? 410A, okay? So we're going to go down to 95. 410A. We'll say 94, that's pretty flipping close. 290. So that's what the head pressure should be on a 13 C on a 70 degree day. 290. This is 22. 180. That's 410A. 290. So it's 100 PSI more on the 410A. It's always higher pressures. Another thing to look for on the 22 and the, the 410A, I always look at, you know, 32, which is freezing. Uh, so, 32, which is freezing. So, anything, anything below 58 on a 22 system, I'm always concerned about that because that's starting to get to the freezing temperatures. So anything 58 PSI on 22, you need to be worried about that because you're starting to get in, you know, into freezing sections. And anything below 100, I believe, on a 410A, let's see, what's the uh, 32? Yeah, see, 100 is 31 degrees. So anything below like uh, 103, 103 on the suction side on 410A, you need to really be concerned about that because you're getting you're getting into freezing. This is the temperature pressure chart on uh, 410A, 32 degrees. It comes 31 is 100. 31 degrees is 100. You know, so I would say anything, anything below 100, you really need to be concerned about. You know, you might have an airflow problem, or uh, could be a bunch of things, or low on low on charge. 410A, that's the suction pressure. You want to be above that. Usually, it's 110, 120 on the suction pressure, and on 22, you know, you're usually in the 64, 70 degree. Uh, 70 psi suction pressure. Unless you have a problem with airflow, um, you know, too small returns or dirty filter or clogged evaporator, then you start getting below 58. You need, really need to be concerned about that. You guys are going to run analog gauges. Okay, so the pressure temperature chart is right here also. See this green right here? You go up to 70 on the green. Okay, we were talking about 70. Plus 30 is 100. Okay. 100 would be about 190. Okay. 
the low side also has got a temperature pressure chart right there okay 32 degrees on the green scales right around 58 see it this one's 410A same thing pressure temperature chart right there Here's a couple other ones here. This one's got, um, you know, 410A, 22 on this one. Right on the little side. You know, you can see it's got the pressure temperature chart on there also. But you can go by that if you had to. I always refer just to go by the, the PT chart, you know, um, get yourself a chart. You get that at any supply house. That's really the better way of doing it. All right, guys, hey, thanks for watching, and hopefully it helped out a couple of guys. Um, I know I've been getting some requests to do different stuff, and uh, I'm trying to, um, you know, accommodate the requests. So uh, have a good day, and um, stay tuned for more stuff to come.